Biology is changing gears. Reductionist models are being replaced by systems models based on massive amounts of data. By integrating different data dimensions, we can model complex phenotypes such as type 2 diabetes. We can place disease genes in biological context, which will help us to identify the best points for assessing disease risk and for therapeutic intervention. However, biologists are generating data on a scale that is outpacing our ability to perform even the simplest of analyses. Sequencing, flow cell, and imaging data are all growing at phenomenal rates. Analyzing those data and integrating them to form a more complete picture of biology will require access to large-scale and affordable computing. I am Dr. Eric Schott, Chief Scientific Officer of Pacific Biosciences located in Menlo Park, California. In the following presentation, I provide an overview of high-performance computing tools now available to biologists. In particular, we will look at recent advances such as cloud and heterogeneous computing. These tools will allow even individual researchers to assemble the computer power needed to carry out big data biology. But first, let's look at the type of computational challenges currently facing big data biologists. As an example, let's imagine a genetics lab trying to identify genes involved in the progression of type 2 diabetes. They will genotype a million SNPs and sequence RNA for several thousand individuals with type 2 diabetes plus experimental controls. In this scenario, each individual generates about three gigabases of sequence information and a million SNP data points. This leads to tens or even hundreds of gigabytes of raw data. The problem occurs once the researchers wish to integrate their information about DNA and RNA variation into a network. A Bayesian network, for example, shows how genes may causally relate to one another to produce the type 2 diabetes phenotype. And this is where they encounter a computational bottleneck. For only three or four genes, the number of possible networks would be trivial. But with even 10 genes, the number of possible networks skyrockets to 10 to the 18th power. As networks grow bigger, the computational power needed to tackle these analyses grows exponentially. The resulting long computer latencies can severely slow down research. Until recently, researchers would tackle this problem by using application or storage servers with extra processing power and random access memory. These servers can be chained together to form a supercomputing cluster. This allows the integration of large-scale data sets comprised of hundreds or even thousands of variables. However, over the past several years, two major innovations have provided scientists with more effective and cost-efficient methods for high-performance computing. The first is cloud computing, which is a flexible configuration of computer cores and associated storage. It is useful for big data biology, as researchers can host large, shared data sets in various public clouds. This makes the data and computational resources available to a wide range of researchers. Similar approaches are already being used by particle physicists. In addition, service providers like Amazon, Google, and Microsoft now offer convenient access to cloud computing resources. Microsoft's Azure resource will offer 20 million CPU hours and 200 terabytes of storage over the next three years via a partnership with NSF. Many applications can benefit from cloud-based computing resources. These include searching a protein sequence against a non-redundant protein database, reconstructing Bayesian networks, and predicting interactions between small molecules and proteins. The architectural features of cloud computing are also highlighted here. The second innovation is heterogeneous computing. Many heterogeneous systems utilize a graphical processing unit, or GPU, which works alongside the general processor, or CPU, in standard desktop or even laptop computers. The GPU is designed to accelerate common mathematical operations standard in video games, but can also be used for general purpose computing. This specialized processor can drastically improve the throughput of a single desktop computer. As with cloud computing, several important biological problems have been solved using heterogeneous computing systems. Bayesian network learning, protein folding, and BLAST searches, for example, have realized a several-fold or more increase in performance and cost efficiency. Cloud and heterogeneous computing are exploding in popularity, and they give researchers access to processing power that rivals custom-built clusters. The remainder of this presentation introduces these computer systems and how they are used. If you are a researcher in the life sciences facing a Mount Everest of data, the following information will allow you to compete with the more computationally savvy groups. 
In the cloud computing model adopted by Amazon, Rackspace, and Microsoft, the user can create many instances of a virtual machine on the provider's infrastructure. The user is charged on a per CPU hour basis. The startup cost is negligible, and computing power is assembled as needed. In one case, a group led by Ben Langmead set up a virtual machine on Amazon's Elastic Compute Cloud to identify SNPs among 2.7 billion DNA sequence reads from a single individual. The analysis took three hours using 40 CPUs, the equivalent of 320 computer cores, and cost only 85 US dollars. The trade-off with cloud computing is control. The user has less control over the underlying hardware and how the computation is distributed versus cluster computing. Recall that these systems were designed for serving many independent website requests, not for communication-intensive tasks such as the simulation of many interacting molecules. Such applications may be better suited for traditional clusters or should be modified to use the more decoupled cloud resources. However, cloud computing offers more control than grid computing in which computation is distributed to computers owned by others who choose to make their systems available for a particular application. In contrast, cloud nodes are typically in the same data center and share access to the same network attached storage. Thus, internode communication is faster and more reliable. The user can also configure the virtual machine image, including the operating system that best meets their needs. Several cloud providers are now in service. I've already mentioned Amazon, Rackspace, and Microsoft's Azure platform. These provide the basic infrastructure for cloud computing. Other services like NextBio and Cytobank provide access to analysis tools that make use of cloud-based resources and make the results available to other scientists. Heterogeneous computational systems use specialized hardware like graphical processing units, or GPUs, working alongside a traditional CPU. GPUs increase speed because they keep many thousands of operations in flight, in parallel, across hundreds of processing units. In contrast, a modern quad-core CPU, which is optimized for latency, not throughput, has orders of magnitude fewer operations in flight at any given time across just tens of processing units. To use the GPU, the programmer writes a custom version of their application. During execution, the necessary data is copied to the GPU's private memory, the GPU-specific functions are invoked, and then the results copied back to the CPU. GPUs are optimized for applications that apply a small set of mathematical operations to many data elements in parallel. The greatest benefit is for applications where the time required to carry out the operations on each piece of data is far greater than the time it takes to copy the data from the CPU to the GPU for processing. The most common heterogeneous systems are GPU-based. The two main GPU providers are AMD and NVIDIA. These cards are typically added to local computers, but are also becoming available from specialty cloud providers. The Folding at Home project is a successful scientific user of heterogeneous systems and has published extensively about their experiences working with this hardware. Cloud, grid, and heterogeneous systems change the cost capability trade-off. Even small labs can now assemble supercomputer scale capabilities, that is, systems capable of performing many trillions of mathematical operations per second. Clouds such as Amazon Elastic Compute 2 are priced on a pay-as-you-go basis. Users can assemble the throughput they need, when they need it, with minimal upfront cost. GPUs can deliver several fold or more increase in throughput for a few hundred dollars per node, much less than the thousands of dollars that several additional CPU nodes would cost. Choosing among these various systems might seem daunting, but it really boils down to a few key questions. First, how much processing do you want to carry out in parallel? Second, where is your data located? More specifically, will your application benefit from fine-grain parallelism or coarse-grain parallelism? For example, searching a set of sequences against a database such as BLAST requires a more coarse-grain parallelism, and so the search would be best carried out on a node of a cluster or in the cloud. However, it's important to note that cloud and heterogeneous technologies are not mutually exclusive. Individual nodes in the cloud can be GPU-based as opposed to CPU-based. Now let's address several frequently asked questions about cloud computing. First, 
how is data security handled in the cloud? Virtual machine instances behave exactly the same as physical machines. It is up to the user to restrict access to the machine using firewall and encryption settings. Open ports should be limited to those necessary for function, and all data and communication should be encrypted. Depending on the data sensitivity and business requirements, users should ask vendors about regulatory compliance, data location, and data segregation policies. Secondly, how is data transfer handled in the cloud? Data transfer speeds are limited by the speed of the internet connection between the user and the cloud services. As such, transferring large amounts of data is troublesome. Amazon offers a fast direct connection to their Elastic Compute resource, but data on the terabyte scale must be loaded onto storage devices and shipped. Third, does data persist in the cloud? Cloud data is stored on a network storage system. The user's virtual machines pull stored data from this system and write results there as well. While data placed on or generated by the virtual machine image only persists for the life of that instance, data on the network storage system is persistent. Last, what operating systems can I run on the cloud? Most of the popular Linux distributions, as well as Windows servers, can run on Amazon's EC2 or Microsoft's Azure. However, the user is responsible for uploading tools and applications to the virtual machine on the cloud. This concludes our presentation. I am Eric Schott, wishing you success in implementing these new tools into your research.